Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming here to watch this video. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to dress up your sublimation t-shirts. If you guys have already been doing sublimation t-shirts, you know that you're kind of limited on colored t-shirts. This morning I was looking on YouTube and I found this really great idea from Simply Sally. If you guys are not subscribed to her on YouTube, be sure to go check out her channel. She made a couple of t-shirts this way and I thought it was really cool. That is what I'm doing in this video today. I hope you guys do enjoy. If you do enjoy it, give me a big thumbs up. And if you're new, I hope that you will subscribe. I've actually been making YouTube videos for about four or five years and it's my hobby and I love making videos for you guys. So when you do subscribe, you are definitely helping me out a lot with my dreams. So be sure to subscribe. It does make me super happy. And I love when you guys comment, like our videos and everything like that. Enough of me talking about my dreams. Um, let's go ahead and get started. And you will need these items for your project. So a spray bottle, we did pick this one up at the dollar store. Then you will need some water. I'm using a bottled water because I do have my studio in the basement. So I did just bring down a water bottle. Then you will also need some acrylic paint. Today I'm going to be using the Apple Barrel brand and you can get this at Hobby Lobby. As you see on the labels, these are matte acrylic paints. And of course, if you are making t-shirts, you will need your t-shirts. And in today's video, we are doing sublimation. So you will need a polyester t-shirt for sublimation. You could also do this same look on a cotton t-shirt because it is just acrylic paint. So guys, this is my first time making a shirt like this. So if I mess up or if something just doesn't work out, that is why this is my first time doing the splatter acrylic paint look. So if I make a mistake, that is why I'm definitely not a professional at making things. I just enjoy recording what I make and hopefully it turns out right and you guys can try this too. So let's go ahead and get started. When Simply Sally did it, I think she said three parts water and um, one part paint. But today I'm just gonna be putting in some in here. You guys can watch me mix it up. I don't really have an exact measurement. I'm just gonna pour it in there. And our daughter Ariana likes to paint, so I actually stole this from her room. I will have to replace it. Um, so if she's watching this, sorry and thank you. So, ooh, hopefully I don't make a big mess. Camera turned off and I didn't even realize it, so hopefully you guys didn't miss anything. It cut off right when I was taking off this lid. It's gonna take this lid and put it back on. I've never used acrylic paint before, and it has kind of like a film on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on and shake it. It does say shake well. Yes, read the bottle, read instructions. Shake well and let dry one hour between coats. So yes, be sure to shake your paint. Thirsty, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this water on myself. And I'm just gonna probably use about a fourth of this bottle because I'm only making two shirts. So maybe I'll do one with pink and one with orange. I actually wanna try it with the pink acrylic as well on a different shirt. So I'm not gonna use too much of this so I don't waste it. Yeah, I'm just gonna use about one fourth of this bottle. I think that's enough for one t-shirt. I will be cleaning out this bottle to start with the pink on a different shirt. And now I'm going to take my water. On this spray bottle, it says I use two ounces. Probably gonna go ahead and go to six or seven with the water. Like I said, I did use two ounces of the acrylic paint and then I went ahead and went to six ounces with the water, two, four, six. So maybe I should go to eight with the water. She said three parts water. So I went ahead and went to eight ounces with the water, two ounces with the paint. I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up and take it outside. Now I'm gonna take you guys outside and spray the first shirt. I'm doing orange on the first shirt and then the other shirt I'm gonna try with pink. I am going to be spraying both shirts outside and I'll probably hang dry them for a couple of hours. And I do also want to put them in the dryer for about 20 or 30 minutes just to go ahead and heat dry them really well. And we will get to do the fun part, sublimating onto these shirts. So hope you guys enjoy so far and let's go outside. So I put this cardboard inside of the shirt. I did pick up this piece of cardboard from Hobby Lobby. It's actually made for t-shirts. So it fit perfectly over it. This cardboard is a little small for this t-shirt, but I think it's fine. And I just put some butcher paper down because I don't have a table for outside. We're also renting here, so I don't want to get acrylic paint all over everything. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my paint. I don't know if this is on yet. So let me see what kind of spray we have. I like that spray setting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start spraying this shirt and it's dripping and I'm not sure why. So let me grab some paper towels and clean my mess up. It all keeps leaking, I'm not sure why. So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and spray this. Oh no, the wind started blowing and I don't really have a certain pattern. I'm just gonna spray it. Okay, and I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll probably flip it over and do the other side. I'm gonna get some rocks and put it on this paper so it stops blowing. 
All right guys, so I've let it dry for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and do the other side. So I flipped it over and I'm gonna go ahead and just spray the other side. Dang it. This paper is driving me crazy. Hopefully I didn't over spray it, but I think it'll look fine. I just put this first one on a hanger and I'm gonna go ahead and do the pink one. And I'm gonna be following the same exact steps that I did with the orange one. And I already have this one on the cardboard. So now I just have to spray it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for another 20 minutes and then I will do the back side. I'm gonna go ahead and let both of those shirts dry for about 20 more minutes outside. And then I am gonna go ahead and stick them in the dryer and let them dry in the dryer for about 20 minutes just to get that paint nice and baked on. But while those shirts are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys on my computer, go ahead and print off both of the prints that I'm gonna be using for those shirts. And then we'll go ahead and get them pressed on. I have about 45 minutes before Selena gets off the bus again. I always try to record a video before she gets home and get it edited and ready to post. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my press and print off the designs. And for these t-shirts, I'm gonna be printing on a sub sublimation paper. And I will have a link down in the description if you guys are looking for some sublimation paper. We always like using this a sub sublimation paper. It is the 125G. And these are the 13 by 19 sheets. And this is the design that's gonna go on the orange one. And it just says Bougie Mom. And I'm not using any software or programs. I just have my JPEG file right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click file, print, Epson ET15000, default settings, copies one, pages all, paper size, we're gonna change this to Super BA3, and orientation is portrait, turn off auto rotate, media quality is best, layout, flip horizontally, that is so that your image does not come out backward, paper handling, we scale to fit paper size and we don't have to do any of these to preview. I think I am going to print the print that big. Um, it's scaled to fit at 85% print entire image and we're going to go ahead and click print. All right guys, and this is the design that's gonna go on the pink shirt or purple, whatever color it came out. The acrylic paint said it was magenta, so hopefully it goes well with this image. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and follow the same print settings for this image right here. Then we'll go throw those shirts in the dryer. Here's our images right here, and like always, I'm gonna cut the top and bottom off. If you don't cut the top and bottom off, you will have a black line on the top of your image or your print and also on the bottom. I do use a rotary cutter, but I did learn from Liz from Coffee Powered House or Coffee Powered Home. You can correct me if I'm wrong. She told me that you can actually tear these images instead of using a rotary cutter, but I'm not gonna try that in this video because I haven't practiced it yet. Just cut off the top and bottom. And I already went ahead and put both of the shirts in the dryer and I put them on for 20 minutes and it's on regular heat. I didn't even change the heat settings. So I'm gonna let them dry for about 20 minutes and then we will go ahead and press these. My press is at 380 degrees and I will be pressing them for 50 seconds. I'm gonna start with the orange one. And as you guys can see, I did add some purple to it or some of the magenta and I was a little bit impatient and I just sprayed it while it was on the hanger. That is why it's kind of dripped right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. Like always I'm gonna put a piece of paper inside of the shirt so that we don't have any of the ink bleeding through the back of the t-shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside of the shirt in between the front and back. Normally I would fold this shirt in half and get my center crease. I'm not gonna do that today because I'm running out of time. So I will just be trying to find the center without that. If you guys do want a full sublimation tutorial, I have a lot of other videos on how to sublimate a t-shirt. And this is the image I'm gonna be putting on this t-shirt. So yeah, there it is. I'm just gonna flip it over face down and we're gonna go three fingers down from the collar or you can take a ruler and go from the top of the collar three inches down and I can see that my design starts right here. So I'm gonna go a little bit up right about there. Take another piece of butcher paper and put it over all of this. And then I'm going to press for 50 seconds. I'm really hoping this turned out nice because it was pretty simple. 
Are you ready to see it? One, two, three. And now I'm going to do the magenta one with this image right here. I think this is gonna be my favorite one. And I did want to tell you guys, I did change out my paper. So if you're new to sublimation, always change out your butcher paper. So I have a brand new paper here. And then I also have a new butcher paper for the inside of this shirt. I thought I oversprayed these, but I'm starting to think that I love them. Take our image, three to four inches, probably three inches down from the collar. Butcher paper. Guys, ready? One, two, I wanted to show you guys quickly on the orange one where I said I missed a little bit on this edge right here. There's quite a bit of white showing. So I would just make sure that you're not overlapping anywhere. And then also right here, you can see a little white strip on this magenta one. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of these shirts. I definitely think that this one is my favorite. All right guys, and that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy watching. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these two shirts. I think this one is my favorite, like I said, but I also love this one and it was actually very simple and a lot of fun to do. But yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. If you do like them, give me a big thumbs up. And I did forget to show you guys the back side, so I'm gonna turn them around and show you the back and then I will close out the video. And that's what the backs look like. Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you did enjoy and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.